We met in China. China. Yes. Mm-hmm. A Zimbabwean and a Jamaican. Mm-hmm. She's far away from home. Yeah, very, very far. far. <laughs> <laughs> oceans. She basically very crossed the oceans far. for love. You know, mm-hmm. when we were growing up, especially for me, we were told men don't cry. Right. Right. And like men is the head of the house, you, sh- you should provide no matter what. Mm. If if there is no food, people are supposed to look at you and say, right. well, we want to eat. Thanks. Hi, this is my little family, my wife and my son Bugayo. And we are waiting for the Megabush family to arrive at our house. The wife is from Jamaica and Tony is from Zimbabwe. We were really nervous to meet Tony's wife who is from Jamaica. Because of the cultural differences, we were afraid we might somehow do it wrong. The title of being a man yes. comes with rights yes. and, and responsibilities. responsibilities. Exactly. Right. From your own opinion, do you think that Africans should allow women to help more? What's your take on making your differences work? I think in your case, it's more harder. Some people think that um, in African marriages, you're going to be one of six wives. Oh. In, 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 in Zim, I've noticed maybe women are, are more, okay, they're given the space to just relax. Exactly. You don't have to worry about working too much. Don't do much. <laughs> you don't have to worry about like earning and providing and yes. doing that. Men um, take it solely upon themselves to do all that. Exactly. In my, where, where I'm from, yes. in our country, that's not so much of an emphasis okay. for men. And I think maybe it's a Western thing right now where even some men say their role is being taken away from it. I don't know. I don't want to get yeah, into the sexism the, yeah, and yeah. whatnot. <laughs> but... Um, we don't really have that emphasis. It's more of a man should be proficient and be able to provide and a woman should also be independent and be able to provide type of thing. So when you grow up in that environment, you don't grow up with expectations from from a male partner. Exactly. You actually grow up having expectations of yourself. And so when you do get married to someone who's raised to take that on, sometimes I feel like he worries too much or like puts too much on himself and i'm like well i'm here to help <laughs> i'm here to help but he's okay. just like no well, i'm the man i'm supposed to you know it's my job i'm the provider and sometimes i feel bad because i feel like that's a lot of stress for one person to carry yeah but i've grown to understand that i mean that's how you guys are but i mean men are providers i'm sure yes. he's the man of the house he put <laughs> here he's taking care of us you can see he's running the show and you know, <laughs> that's how we've been exactly how raised. can i say i've been raised and you know natured so really i i, I don't so, know so so i've had to learn how to yeah, allow it's, him it's to, one of those to do that, yes, thing. Yeah. But if, if a man comes out on social media and say i'm depressed he needs a bubble people would laugh at you say what kind of a man are you but that's a problem yeah it is that we are, we are, we are now <laughs> recognizing that it's a problem mm, today mm. But I feel like if we are to analyze this whole situation, some people might say it's not a problem. Because if we are to look at the Western countries and, and, and you know, people coming out and say that I'm depressed, and that people say that they are now becoming too soft. Yeah. I think what's how important you, is a how balance. Do you, how do you then strike the balance? Strike yeah. a balance. Now, that's, e- that's not easy. <laughs> and true. Yeah. So that's why you see these that's people true. say, now nah, we are just going to be men. Like those men. We, we, are not, we don't want anything new. You can be depressed all you want. Your problem doesn't go away. Exactly. Still, that's what so. we say. But, but even in Zimbabwe, <laughs> yes. the suicide rate amongst men is yeah. still higher. Exactly. You're so right. you achieve nothing. They're still depressed. They're just bottling it in and keeping it in and then killing themselves. You know, people, especially <laughs> men, you know, this is how Africans have been. When you kill yourself, you don't feel sympathy to all. <laughs> and it's, 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 not a to- it's not a topic that people are ready to talk about. When people talk about suicide in Africa, mm. they look at it as a topic not worthy to talk about. Because you are yourself, you killed yourself. That's, that's, that's your problem. Even when, the, have you ever seen how Africa, when you kill yourself in Africa, have you ever seen how they bury you? 
they won't even allow you to come back you know in africa when you die they take you from the hospital and then bring you back home, home. Mm -hmm. that's how they do it but when you kill yourself they don't do that they'll just take you from the hospital and throw you into your grave they don't they don't that's sort of like a lesson you've ever give it a dignified burial the cultures are different mm. and the people would, they would do crazy stuff even if you are there at the funeral and you are thinking of killing yourself mm. tomorrow you 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 won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a way to deter <laughs> yeah, exactly. so like from your own opinion do you think that africans should allow women to help more i don't think anything should be broad brushed mm. i think each couple mm -hmm should choose and th that's what i'm strong about mm. each couple should choose what works for them Thank you. don't let society tell you what should happen in your household mm. that's what i believe in mm. um because you know his society where he's uh, your society where you're brought exactly. up mm. in says well you should provide and do this and yeah how about if he's going through a tough time i'm not gonna sit there and be like uh well he's <laughs> the guy you should do <laughs> to me it's two people building a home and in that case if that's for me right yeah. then i believe i should help but then someone else might not feel that way so i feel two people in a relationship should come together and decide what their dynamic in their household should be that's that's okay. amazing mm. that's interesting yeah i think i think i think that's fair that's fair i, uh, I agree with that as well do you think that's we're the same country. people we're we're all African by race. You'll find that those of us who were taken mm. to taken away from the continent okay. went through generations of being detached from Africa. Definitely. And so many of us have identity issues. Mm -hmm. You will meet a lot of Caribbean people and Africans and uh, uh, African Americans who will straight up deny they do not want to be referred to as African because they have to them they have their own identity i'm not african i'm american or i'm jamaican or i'm trinidadian or i'm whatever their nationality is um they don't necessarily recognize the impact on identity to so, say you know a chinese in america still sees themselves as chinese mm. a chinese person in Jamaica is Jamaican, but they still see themselves as Chinese. But if you refer to that black person as African, many people take offense. Um, and a lot of that is rooted also in the, what the media has, has for years yeah. portrayed of Africa. No one wants to be connected exactly. to that. It's like, oh, there's poverty yeah, yeah. and there's no education. And there's a, so there's that, um, there's that divide. Yes. Okay. And when someone tries to or when their people are coming from africa or coming from the caribbean and trying to bridge that gap what they're trying to say is look uh this africa that you're fearful of or mm. that you're not proud to be associated with uh people are not very that not that much different from you mm. okay and in fact you're descended from there and the things that you would see on media that makes you want to separate yourself or distance yourself isn't the entirety of of what African Africans are. So I think they're trying to undo that type of self-hate that exists by showing the similarities that we do have. Because you yes. know what, even though um, we're black people in the West, yes. okay, there's a lot of our culture that's influenced by or yes. African yeah. roots that to this day is present. If I should start showing you certain things in especially like Jamaican heritage, it's African. Even like the drums, folk music. Yeah. Um, we have certain dances like, um, yeah. duk, what's it called? Dinkimini. Mm. There's Jankunu. There's like certain words in our language. There's so many things that link and, like, directly Korea, like, back. Oh. Uh, they're they almost, the, yeah, they almost the same. It is on one of our videos. You should check it out. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, so even certain religions, there's something called Pokomania. You can Google it. Okay. You know, Zionism. and So there's a lot of African undertone and actually not undertone, very upfront influence in the Jamaican culture, in the Caribbean culture. Um, that shows that we have African roots. So What made you do say we should definitely create a YouTube channel. 
That was that 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 all came from Modamaya, really. Modamaya. It was inspired by him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, that trip we had to go. So he he had come to Zimbabwe, right? Yeah, initially he came to Zimbabwe. When he actually came to Zimbabwe, that's when he started that agenda. Yes. That, yo, should start a YouTube channel and whatnot, whatnot. So me, I I, I actually saw first end what he actually went through to make videos. And I saw it was a lot of work and it was <laughs> it was Years yeah, of it was it was plowing. pain and like the things that guy goes through people don't see. So they, like, they don't know. Yeah, they don't know what happens behind the scenes. So I saw it and then I thought, yo, it was it was it was <laughs> a lot of work but um when we then went to Ghana he started again, then me and the wife spoke and then we thought, Ah, you know what? Yeah. Because she's also quite good at, you know, the yeah, vo- videography and yes. the voiceovers and yeah. You know, Maya just pointed out that perhaps mm-hmm. someone somewhere would be interested in the unique yes. um, dynamic between right. us, you know, me being from one cultural background and him from another. Um, it might be interesting, and then also with me living here, how well I'm adapting to Zimbabwe and that's, so on. That's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the difference is, do they affect you in your marriage or? <laughs> I think it goes both ways. I think it affects us, and it also strengthens us. Oh, okay. There are pros and cons. Yeah. Cons include like initial, especially initially, that language barrier. In reality. People do speak in Shona more. So for someone coming from out of the country and you look the same, hello, you can't look on me and tell exactly. I am not Zimbabwe and I look the same. So everyone would come up to me and speak to me in that language. And um, so that was a bit of a struggle. In terms of the marriage itself, maybe when we're with family members initially, again, yes. you know, everyone's gathered and you're cracking jokes in Shauna, and then everyone's <laughs> laughing, and then they're like, oh, 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 wait, <laughs> Debs, uh, okay, let's translate. <laughs> and then they try to translate, it's like, eh, hey, lost in translation. <laughs> women, Jamaican women, right? Exactly. Are generally more, what's the word that you would say? What? Uh, they're not easily moved. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to say I'm stubborn. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm quite stubborn. Uh, but not too much, just okay. a little bit. Just enough. <laughs> I think. Just enough. So so I've had to adapt, you oh, know, to, okay. to being not so stubborn. Um, okay. so I think that's something probably one one thing that we we've had to um adapt to with each other. But I feel like that's is it being stubborn or being i think uh, maybe not stubborn but more of like independent thank you i guess males from that side are also quite different yes right so you have a uh, an african male who, who does things in the african context exactly they exactly. also expect their female how can i say to reciprocate that behavior yes. in a certain manner so mm-hmm. I think that can cause clashes sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, with Tony and I, yeah. um, we're we're an intercultural couple, right? Exactly. So maybe we we have different um, struggles than you guys. Do you think we do, or do you think marriage is just the same, despite whatever cultural background you're from? What's your take ah. on making your differences work? I think in your case. It's more harder, mm. like because of cultural differences, mm. and you know how marriage is. At the end of the day, you argue over different uh, cases, <coughs> and you have your own cultures. He does have his own cultures. So, in your case, it's way harder. Mm. But me and my wife, we are Zimbabweans. Mm. She knows the role that she's supposed to play. Mm. I know the role that I'm supposed to play. Mm. I don't know in your case that how many days or hours or even years you to sit down and say this is our culture mm-hmm. you know like it doesn't know at first it, it doesn't know much about he might know about you but it doesn't know much about your culture mm-hmm. so along the way that's when you have to really show your true color so that you can realize oh so this is their culture mm-hmm. one thing about us which i want to also ask you yeah. one thing about us that made that not so difficult yeah. was because we share the same faith oh right so that somewhat overrides a lot of cultural ah. differences my question to you is do mm. you think um faith yes. shares a role like religious faith or your beliefs share 100%. plays a role 
100%. in that dynamic and how? Let's say I am, as for me, I am Pentecostal and in she's Catholic. Hello. I was. Yeah, she was. <laughs> There's a huge difference with the way they do things at the church and the way they do things at Pentecostal mm -hmm. differences. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, if there's that difference, it can be a, a, a big disadvantage and really hard mm -hmm. to handle things in the family. Mm -hmm. That is why at the end of the day, she had to change, you know, to, to become a Pentecostal. I mean, this, that's, I mean, we sat down and we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, it's okay. I can come to you, mm -hmm. to your church. Mm -hmm. And that's how it, I feel like, Communication is really important when it comes to this whole thing. Mm, I see. Some people think that um, in African marriages, you're going to be one of six wives. Oh. Or uh, your husband is oh. going to beat you up. Exactly. Because they see that in a lot of these African movies. What would you like to share about um, marriage in the African context to those who are looking to understand more? You know, when people see an African man with six wives, at the end of the day, that's their own thing as Africans, and they're okay with it, you see. And then the Western, sometimes they see it as a bad thing, because a man is supposed to have one wife. But if you are to look at it and study it, with the way they are doing it, <laughs> it it's normal to them. If you are to interview even the the women you would be surprised that they would be okay with it is it normal to you to me it's not because <laughs> if not <laughs> no, no, no i'm saying like I don't she's it's looking normal. At you. no for me i'm saying having a one wife mm. that's that's normal mm. having six wives that's not normal that's what i'm saying so is okay. it a, is it a, is it <laughs> Is that an African thing or is it a personal thing? You want to help to dispel the, it's a the, the myths out there. It's a <laughs> And she's now speaking up. I, yeah, she is. At least now we're having a conversation. Yeah. We're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I would say it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. it, today it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. But back then it was a must for a man to have probably around four oh. or five wives. Why? Yeah. The reason being that a man would want to build what is called a legacy. Our Jamaican Murora is now cooking Saza. It was really, <laughs> it was really interesting to see. After spending some time with the Mekapush family, I was put in a position to ask myself, what really happened back then? Jamaican people look exactly like African people. What went wrong? The way she invested time to learn Zimbabwean culture gave me hope that in the future we would see more African people going to places like Jamaica and Jamaicans coming to Africa. My message to everyone watching this video is one love, one people.